In this session, we're going to take a look at masking in Corel Photo Paint. In the last few sessions, we went through the fundamentals of working with bitmap objects in Corel Draw. Kind of dealt with it from a standpoint of working with spot colors, and because we're focused on screen printing and spot color separations, we really want to keep it limited there. We didn't want to get into a whole bunch of information relating to color management and working with color in Draw. If you're interested in that, you can go to YouTube. There's some great videos on color management and color gamuts and all kinds of information relating to color in Corel Draw. And as I said, if you're working with wide format output or any other substrate where you're not working with spot colors, you probably want to be aware of how the color management in Draw actually works. But we work with spot colors, so we turn that off. Then we did another session where we recreated a logo working with both monochrome and vector to demonstrate that we want to be able to identify where we have the opportunities to avoid going to vector if we've got complex graphics and just be able to work with monochrome bitmaps. And in this session, I want to take a look at working with masking in Corel Photo Paint. Very important because really this is how I take graphics apart in Photo Paint when I want to do production artwork and also when I want to do design work in Corel Draw using raster images or bitmap objects. I've got a simple graphic here. It's just called masking with a grayscale next to it. And we're going to go ahead and open this. I'm going to go bitmaps and I'm going to select edit bitmap right here. And that's going to open my graphic in Corel Photo Paint. There we go. Now, the minute you've got a graphic open, you'll notice it's, you can come over here and we'll just maximize that. And you'll notice that you can zoom in and zoom out here in Photo Paint just like you can in Draw with your mouse wheel. So we'll go ahead and just have this fill our area a little bit here. And the next thing I want to do is take a look at the masking tools up here in the toolbar. Underneath the pick tool, left click, hold down. You've got rectangle, ellipse, and many different tools for masking. Very powerful tools for masking available in the toolbar. Go ahead and click off here and we'll come up here. We've also got mask up here in our menu. And we've got create. And then we've got select. We've got color mask. Different tools for working with masks here. We also have here under object create mask and if I had a mask I could go from selection, copy selection, etc. Go ahead and click off here and the first thing we'll do is just come over here and click on the rectangle mask tool and we'll come here and left click hold down and select the area around our green rectangle and release. Now we have a mask and the mask is the area that is not red. The area that we can work with here is around the green rectangle. Anything that we do in photo paint will only be applied to the pixels selected inside of the mask. If we zoom in here, we'll see that these are pixels, and here's the mask, which ends at this group of pixels, pixels, and over here is the area that is not masked. So what's under the red is not in the mask, it's outside of the mask. What's here outside of the red is in the mask. Now, when we're doing this, working with masks, we want to be aware of the fact that Anything that we do in Photo Paint will only be applied within the mask. For example, I have the eraser tool here. I left click, hold down, drag. You notice that as soon as I'm outside the mask, the eraser tool has no effect. But as soon as I'm inside the mask, the eraser tool has an effect. And that will be applied to any effects or filters or work you're doing inside of Photo Paint with raster images. Anything that's inside the mask will be affected. Anything that's outside the mask will not be affected. I'm going to hit Control Z. Another tool we want to look at is up here underneath the pick tool, if you left click, hold down, is the mask transform tool. If I select that, you'll notice that my mask now has handles on it. And I could left click and resize that, scale it. I can also left click and change the width, or do the same thing with the height. You'll notice up here in the properties bar, we have a change. And there's different modes for the mask transform tool. For example, if I click here, I'm going to get to rotate, and I could left click, hold down, rotate, or skew my mask. Now, I can get to those through the properties bar up here, but I can also simply left click. And here I am on the distort mode for the mask transform tool. Click again, and I'll be on perspective. And you can see how I can radically change my mask working with this mask transform tool. I'm going to click off and go back to the pick tool and I'm just going to go up here and click on mask and it'll go to remove or we could hit control R. Beneath the rectangle mask we have the ellipse mask. Left click, 
drag and hold release and I've created an elliptical mask. Also like the vector objects in draw, if I hold down shift and control, I'll create a perfect ellipse or circle. I'll hit control Z. Beneath that we have the freehand mask tool and I can just left click and drag that around kind of like drawing and then wherever I want to stop I can just double click and that will create a mask with a freehand tool. Hit control Z. Beneath the freehand tool we have the lasso mask. Very interesting tool here. Go ahead and left click, hold down and lasso here around my green object, double click and release and you can see it kind of snapped to my green object. It was looking for a place in color change or a variance in color and pixels and then it stopped and made its selection there. I'm going to hit control Z. Beneath that we have our magic wand. Nope, we're going to go to magnetic mask here first. And you'll see here that there's a plus sign there and if I click and start to drag my cursor that I start to select the area of the mask coming down here and just slowing down a bit and then coming up this way that I'm actually kind of like have a magnetic mask line being applied to my object right there. Double click and I went inside a little bit there but double click and you can see the mask was applied around the rectangle but I moved my mouse a little bit there and we've got some distortion going on but that's our magnetic mask. I want to hit control Z. Let's take a look at the magic wand. I'll go ahead and click here and click on the green and you can see that that selected my green circle. Now if I come up here in the properties bar and change this to additive mode which is already there and I click on the red now I've got the red selected. Now you can't see the red because the red mask is applied. I'm going to click on the yellow and that's selected. If I come up here and click on the subtractive mode and click that will be removed from my mask. One thing I do want to take a look at briefly here, let's go to mask remove, is tolerance. And many of these tools have tolerance set with them. And the tolerance right now is set to 91%. If I come up here and click on my black in the grayscale, you can see that all of the grayscale is selected all the way through the 90s and the only part that wasn't selected was the white and that's because of my tolerance settings. Let me change my tolerance settings back to 10. I'll hit enter, I'll go to mask and I'll remove and then I'll go ahead and click here and now you can see that my mask was applied to my 100 percent black and my 90 percent black but all of the other levels of color above 10 were not selected. That's because of my tolerance settings. But if I want to select more of this color, I could go back, left click here, and we'll move this up to say 63. Click, and now you can see how the tolerance has changed the way in which Photo Paint applied the mask to my raster object. So you want to be aware of this tolerance when you're working with masking in Draw. I'm going to hit Control Z. I'm going to go up here to the mask. I'm going to go to the Color Mask tool very different tool. We want to be aware of how it works. I'm going to come over here to the eyedropper. I'm going to click on this green. You can see that that green is set up here. I'm going to click on this blue and I'm going to click on this yellow. I'm going to come up here and click on the preview in overlay and I can see what was selected. And we can see we've got, I'm going to hit OK here and apply that. Now here I've got a very high tolerance setup. So I want to go back here to normal mode. I'm going to change this to say 10. Hit enter. I'm going to go to mask remove. And I'm going to go to mask. I'm going to go to color mask. And now you can see that I've got the correct selection here. I'll click off and click on because I changed my tolerance. Now looking at this how this tool works it enables me to select multiple colors at the same time in my objects when I'm doing my masking work. Now I want to take a look at this from a standpoint of let's say this is a logo and what I want to do is pull out these three objects. Let's say this is a logo and I want to pull these three objects out separately from my graphics. So the first thing is just go ahead and crop this and we can kind of pretend like we're doing a logo 
production color separation set up in photo paint the first thing I'm going to want to do is take my green right here so I'll go ahead and click on that and select it then I'll come up here to object and I'll select create cut selection now let's go over here to the object properties docker and see what happened I'm going to click off my background and you can see that here is my green object pulled out from my background so I've got a new object that I can use and draw and I can convert that to a monochrome or a grayscale or what have you which would be this green and then I could set it up for color separation let's go ahead and click on the red but we want to make sure that we have the background selected in the objects docker and we'll click on the red we'll go up here to object create cut selection now I've got my green and my red pulled out of my background next thing I want to do is take my yellow make sure I'm on background in the objects properties docker come over here to the magic wand tool click on that go to objects right click and select copy selection so I've got my different colors here this is a four color logo even though we're just working with this masking in objects at this point I could go ahead and save this back into draw now back in draw what I'm going to find when I open up is now I have a group of four objects on layer one I can ungroup this I could take this rectangle and I could go to bitmaps mode and select black and white I'll go to line art now you can see the threshold isn't going to pull that one. so what I want to do is take my threshold up select OK now I've got a monochrome that I've created from that object I can come over here and right click on the green and that'll be green same thing with this object bitmaps mode black and white come down here to line art and select OK come over here right click on the red and now I've got a red same thing with my yellow here bitmaps mode black and white when I come down to line art check my threshold bring that up quite a bit because it's a yellow select OK right click there's my yellow the masking in the background which is my text now at this point looking at this from text I'd probably go with vector but we'll go ahead and convert this also bitmaps mode black and white and I'll select OK I'll come over here and right click on a blue now what I've done is I've set this up so that it has color properties and draw now if I wanted to convert this to spot colors I could do that and then print it out as a color separation because I've taken this raster image apart with masking in Corel Photo Paint. 